I looked at that guy in front of my mom and I dropped an F-bomb at him. <laughs> and she just Did you laughed. call him the name on the bat handle? Ah. Hey guys, what's up? Jeff here from Pack Geek. I'm here with my buddy Ken Kinsley. Hey, what's going on everyone? Thanks for having me on. We've yeah. uh, talked about it for a little while, but finally got it done. It, it has been uh, a, a long time since we've been talking about this, so I'm finally excited to have Ken on here. We're at the Texas Card Show, and there's like 200 tables here. It's a really good sized card show. Uh, I guess they haven't had a card show this big in like two decades. That sounds right. I mean, I'm guessing, I know that in Arlington, which is where I live, the uh, National was there twice, I think, in the early to mid 90s. And I'm assuming that's probably the the biggest thing we've had since then. I mean, our regular show's pretty good. It's pretty good size, yeah. but it's nothing like this. Yeah, this is uh, a lot of dealers, a lot of familiar faces, uh, just like Ken. Um, so we were, we were talking earlier, and I had these uh, 89 FLIR packs out on the table and Ken immediately said, if we're gonna break some product, let's break that. So you got you got some special memories with these. Yeah, I mean, you know, you wanna break something, story time with Uncle Ken. I, uh, <laughs> so I would have been uh, just turned 10 years old and it's funny, my mom doesn't remember this, but we all know about the Bill Ripken that's in here and it was on like the national news. It was like on the CBS news and I was collecting cards. This would have been the second year I collected and my mom, uh, so I come in here, you gotta see this, you gotta see this. And so she told me about it. Went to a card show, you know, maybe a couple months later. I'm 10 years old. These packs were going for $3 a pack. Oof. Yeah, I mean, that was a lot for $89. That was the heyday. Yeah, yeah. my mom's like, okay, you can get three. It's yeah. a 10 spot. And took them, this was at a Ramada Inn. And so it was a show inside and then outside you had all kinds of sofas and chairs. Sitting out there, first pack I opened one. Boom, there was a Ripken. Wow. I was so excited. There was a guy, who knows, I, you know, he was probably in his 20s or 30s right there. He's like, I'll give you five bucks for that card. I looked at that guy in front of my mom and I dropped an F-bomb at him. <laughs> and she Did you call laughed. him the name on the bat handle? Ah, well, I didn't call him that. I, it was just part of that and you. And my mom does not remember that, but she actually laughed. I mean, she didn't condone me cursing at 10, but <laughs> she knew, so. That was yeah. aggressive for a 10 year old. I, hey, you know what? I knew my cards at 10 years old. I see 10 <laughs> year olds now and I'm like, how did I know that much about cards at 10? These kids can't even tie their shoes. So uh, for if you aren't familiar with it and if you collected cards in the 80s or 90s, you know this card, but so Billy Ripken uh, has a, a card where on the bat handle, I don't know the exact story, but I think I remember one of his teammates wrote something on the bat handle as a, as a practical joke, and he went out there and took his his FLIR picture with that. Is that? I've heard the, that. I've heard that he knew about it. Yeah, I mean, who knows? It's all, but you know what? That's what makes the story great. Yeah. Is that yeah, we good, don't know. That's a good point. It's just all legend and, you know. <laughs> well, so, but there ended up being variations because they ended up catching it through the print run. And so they're like, four or five different variations. There's one where there's just a white box. There's a white out where it's scribbled out. There's a black uh, little dot they put over it, just trying to cover it up. Um, and so those, depending on which one you get, there, there's different levels of value and rarity with that. But um, I just want the one where I can read it, yeah. right, frankly. And so it's funny, you you have a story with your mom and that because I I was at a pack shop in 89. This I mean, this is all the rage when this card came out, Absolutely. every kid. Every adult, for that matter, was trying to find this card. And so I was going through packs of this. I don't think they were three bucks a pop at, at the shop I was opening, but they were expensive enough. I spent, blew my entire allowance trying to go through these. And so uh, I'm just opening them up in, in the card shop, in the mall, in Topeka, Kansas. And, uh, and so I probably blew through five or six packs, no luck. The owner of the shop was watching this and he thought it was funny. He pulled a pack out, opened up, and he, he pulls the card right there. And instead of being the nice guy he could have been and offering that to the kid that just spent all his money there, um, he just kind of laughed about it, showed it to me, and then put it away. So uh, my mom, being the trickster she is, sent me next door to Dillard's. I'm like, why would I want to go to Dillard's? She's like, just go and look at, look at shoes or something. So I go over there. My mom, I find this out later, goes over to the shop owner, wheels and deals, figures out how she can buy this card, end up giving it to me for Christmas. Well, she didn't know what was on the card until after she bought it. 
And so it was like, here's your Christmas present, Jeff. I was able to acquire this. I don't approve this sort of language and didn't realize this was on the card that you were going after. Uh, but so, yeah. So anyways, I was able to add that and, uh, you know, got to love the moms. Are you fortunate enough to still have the card? I don't, ha I don't still have that uh, one. I think that was, that made it through. We were talking about purges earlier. I think that was unfortunately a casualty of a purge along the way, probably sold it in college for, uh, you know, money to buy a six pack or something that has no value now. Yeah, that, that six pack was going quickly. <laughs> For sure. So dude, let's try and find one. All right, let's we got, see what we got We got uh, six we packs each six here. Inch, I think this is a, a decent chance. This is probably more than I opened at the mall that day. This is, uh, this is, uh, it'll take a little longer than opening packs now. This is back when you had 15 cards a pack. The, now the, you get are, like yeah. three cards a pack, if, if four yeah, cards. Yeah, yeah, some packs have All one. Right. Um, so, Something we should also mention, <laughs> this is the set that has the uh, Ken Griffey Jr. rookie in it. Yeah. So uh, we all know and love Ken Griffey Jr. And that was also one of the super hot cards uh, back in 89. But And you know what else that I only really knew about in the last couple of years? Because um, obviously, you know, as you're, as you're paying attention to what's going on, you're not thinking about the junk wax. All those Randy Johnson variations, oh, too. You know, I failed to mention Randy Johnson. I mean, that's... Dude, Hall of Famer? Yeah, Hall of Famer and like 42 variations of that card. That's right, because he it was a Marlboro sign, mm -hmm. right? So do you remember the story behind that one? Just, I, I don't know the whole story. I just know that they were trying to, you know, black it out or color it out. And there's yeah. like a green tent, a red tent. Yeah. I've looked at a few of them. I'm like, I don't know what tent this is, but whatever. <laughs> it's, which, a, it's a Randy Johnson rookie. Which tent is this? Yeah. So, so. yeah, the Randy Johnson card um, behind him, next to the scoreboard, I believe, there was a Marlboro ad, and because they didn't want to have the cigarette ad on trading cards the kids are buying, they caught it during the print run, may or may not have been intentional, and they had no. different uh, cover-up versions, kind of like the, the Ripken bat handle. So it's another, they had a bunch of errors. Yeah, in yeah, that yeah, set. yeah. It's, you know what, we were error happy during this era, Without, and I think there was a str some strategery to that. I think you're probably right. Yeah. I think they're- see, pro, see also pro set. All right. All right. Good call. Let's Good luck, man. Here. You're right. Carl Nichols. Oh, dude, while we're at it, will you talk about uh, well, why Beans Card Block? Rookie of the Year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was. Yeah. Um, I haven't been writing as much lately because I've been working on my side hustle a little. But, uh, you know, I've, I uh, have a website, beansballcardblog.com. Um, so feel free to check it out. You can follow me on Twitter at beansbcardblog. They didn't give me enough characters to put it all out there. So. You know, you talked about the alliteration of my name, Beans Ball Card Blog. I, I chose that, chose that with some strategy. It works. It works well. Uh, Steve Bouchelle, is he still, uh, is he still with the Ranger staff? Um, I not hope sure. not. But hey, <laughs> another <laughs> one that was big Flash in '89, Gordon. Tom Flash Gordon. It's not a very valuable card now, but back in '89, this I was excited to pull this especially being a Royals fan. I love this design and also it seemed a little easier in my town. I was in a town of like 30,000 people. 88 Fleer you could not find. So I'm always, I've always loved 88 Fleer. Yeah. But uh, 89 Fleer maybe because of uh, Mr. Ripken, it seemed to be a little more uh, easy to find. So. That 88 Fleer with the Mark Grace and the Greg Jeffries rookies, that was that was a hot product. It was just a beautiful design. Very yeah, clean, was. very clean. What we got here? Uh, recent Hall of Famer Harold Baines. Obviously, uh, not exactly uh, going to send the kids to college with that one, but <laughs> not going to retire early. But look what I got. I'm going to trick you here. What do we have? It's the Jose Uribe, we're rich. Wow! Isn't, isn't, that, uh, isn't that the one that we keep seeing selling the listing for a hundred bucks? I don't know. If is it's that, that somebody's listing that? It's for some bucks? joke. I, I don't even know what it is. Well, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure somebody will I let us know down in the, the comments. Show. Hey, man. Yeah. If we can rich. get ten cents for that. Ah, there's another one that was uh, popular, and this might even be his rookie too. Ramon Martinez yeah. back in 1989. Heck yeah. You know, he was the Martinez, not the little brother. And we'll see how Martinez that turned out. Ramon Martinez was a stud. He was. He was early on. I think that was his rookie. Man, this is sure more loaded was. than I remember. I mean, it was a good time for rookies. I'm and, not having much and luck over here, Ken. Yeah, I'm not either. I mean, obviously, the stuff I'm showing has not been. Uh, not the big hits. Yeah. 
Hey, we both got Frank Viola on the back of one of our packs. Heck yeah. Hey, uh, is there anything you're looking for at the show? Are you hunting for anything for the, the personal collection? You know, I mean, if I can find some of those T36s, you may have seen some of them. They're the uh, 1911 auto driver's cards. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I'm hoping with there being dealers here, you know, that we've never seen before, maybe yeah. I can stumble into some of those. I saw some vintage earlier. But so yeah, you might... nothing, uh, nothing in particular. I may look for some of the, the wrestling stuff. I've been getting a little more interested in that. Tell so. us about, wait, wait, like 80s wrestling? Like that, uh, those 82, there's like an 82 set. Um, it's like the vintage set for trading cards. You know, it's yeah. the one that everybody does. The it's bright got, colors. Yeah, it's got Hogan and Andre the Giant. I'd like to pick a few of those up. I've, uh, you know, seen some guys on Twitter. Yeah, a little Dave, more active. David Peck. David Peck. Who's, and, yeah, who's and he was uh, on the, known for a while, yeah. Yeah, and he was on the Fat Packs podcast and did a really good segment on that. And He did. It got, a little, got me a little bit of interest in it and then, uh, Anson pre-war cards. Okay. He sent me a couple of them because he's a wrestling fan too, and awesome. he's been buying some of them. So he sent me a couple of them. The wrestling cards are fun, man. Well, we got a rookie. Of... We didn't get a Bill Ew. Ripken, but we got a rookie. Got a John Smoltz. I believe eighty nine's his rookie. That's correct. Or is it eighty eight? And Glavin's eighty nine. Edit this no, out I think if you're I am right. incorrect. I think you're right. No, I think that's his rookie. <laughs> that's his rookie. I think you're right. Um, so, dude, speaking of uh, fat packs. Talk to us, you've got a new, uh, you and Eric are doing a monthly feature mm -hmm. on there. Talk to us about that. Yeah, we started it last month, um, recording with Eric once a month, uh, and it, we, we didn't have a name, we kind of came up with a name on the show. We were looking for input, and nobody really had a suggestion, so we're just calling it Inserted. Whoa. So, yeah, Whoa. And, and you listen to the podcast. I dropped into that's what she said, but um, yeah, what we're doing is we're reviewing just, uh, we're going to do... Uh, polls on Twitter and you can pick and we'll do, we'll take the same year and we'll put multiple sports and you pick the insert set and we'll just review it um, and what I learned from the first two the first one we did the uh, Fleer I think it was ultra jambalaya basketball yeah yeah those are huge uh, I got three to go why don't you, I, why don't you gonna, take no, one no, while no, I'm, I'm talking some more all no, right you hang on to those but yeah so we talked about that and obviously that's a very high price set uh, very condition sensitive and so on so we talked about that first we took basketball out so that we don't have to do bat so that I don't have to do basketball every month. Uh, we recorded this week and we did the 93 Pinnacle masks from the hockey. They're the Dufex, different kind of thing. So I like that we're mixing it up. These are low price. These are ones that everybody can afford to get this set. So we're going to continue monthly doing a monthly segment. Uh, and oh, was that like the chorus of angels? Was there light shining down? Can, um, can we put that we in? Gotta... Uh, and, oh unbeknownst to him on the show said hey next month may is the indy 500 let's do the 2007 rittenhouse indy car autograph set so he said that was cool so that's got danica patrick's first autograph you have uh dan weldon who has passed away in an auto act and a on track accident uh you His got some autograph? other le yeah oh wow that's... you got some other legends like dario franchiti scott dixon so we'll go over that for the month of may because I am a big IndyCar fan. That's where I am. So I got to tell you, I, I'm i impressed by how wide your sports card knowledge is. Like, I, I, can, I can do baseball, football, and basketball, all right. I have, like, a window of time I'm specifically well-versed in. But, dude, you, all the way back to, like, tobacco cards, to modern-day cards, and then every sport... I'm really impressed by that. It's 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 one of those general level knowledge, and obviously a lot of the knowledge is probably more from when I was a kid. But I'm kind of like I feel like I'm very general level. And then you got those guys that are the diehard collectors that you know they can tell you everything. I can't go that far, but at least I do have a somewhat wide range because over time I've collected just about everything. Yeah. You know, uh, it's too expensive to do it now. But even as a teenager, I was collecting hockey, basketball, football, baseball, racing. You know, had it all, and I've even started to have a little bit of interest in the non-sports stuff. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh that's second year. Yeah, second, year, second he's, year. He saw this Greg Jeffries pop up. Second I, year. By the way, Greg Jeffries was signing at the National last year, mm -hmm. which I was super interested in. I didn't end up getting his autograph. He ends up, and he does a lot for signatures for soldiers. He just seems like he is, you know, he is kind of the butt of a lot of jokes. But one, that's wrong because that dude had a good, long, solid yeah, career, a yeah, couple yeah. all-star games. Was he a Hall of Famer? No, but you know what? Apparently, he is a Hall of Famer as a human being. Yes. Yeah, everything I've read about him. I found this interesting. Look at uh, just the darkness on that Pendleton. I don't know if you can tell it on the lighting. Yeah, it's just a lot more gray. I don't think it would show up on camera, so 
We'll skip that. You'll have to take our word on it. Oh, you want to try to do it? I don't know if you can pick it up or not, but it was just a lot darker. It was kind of kind of random, and it didn't even show it at the angle I showed you, so I wonder if it's my eyes playing tricks on me. <laughs> All right, what else we got here? No Griffies, no, no Griffies, Ripkins yet. But I got a Candy Sierra. Ew. Kevin Mitchell, dude was a stud for a few years. Oh, man, super stud. Rocket Clemens. I always loved this design. I always loved what Fleer did with, uh, you know, not respecting the borders, if you know what I mean. Like the heads would pop over yeah, the top border. I, always, I like that too. Always appreciated that. Fred Lynn is a tiger, man. I don't even know that I remembered he was a tiger. So uh, what what are you currently collecting? Mark McGuire. Ooh, hey, all right. Yeah, pretty much just, you know, I'm kind of doing the, uh, the T36 deal. Right. Uh, I like to pick up some T206s at some good prices when I can. I know you're building that. So where are you at on the monster? Oh, I mean, I'm at, I got like 40 of them. It's not, it's not a set accumul. It's, it's an accumulation, not a set build. That's okay, the way, right. that's the way I'm looking at it. Ricky Henderson in a Yankees uniform. You know, I pick up some stuff for my wife. She's a Stars fan. So every once in a while I pick up something. Something cool for her. I got her, you know, a uh, Tyler Sagan autograph for Christmas. Nice. For her, she's got a she's got a binder. Every once in a while, she'll go through it. It's got stars cards and uh, the 90210 set that I bought her. What? Oh, the 90210. Yeah. Oh. Wait, from the original cast oh, or the yeah. reboot? Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's the only the... cast that should have a card set. So another story. I love this one. This guy here that very few of you probably know of. This is Doug DeCenzo, and that is the man that I got my first in-person autograph from. He's the first big league ball player that I ever met. At a stadium? Was uh, No, was signing at a show, not that show that I talked about where I pulled this, but at the same location. Would have been about a year later because it was I got the autographs on 89 cards. Really? So, Interesting. Yeah, but um, my very first in-person autograph, and he signs through the mail too, has a real nice looking signature. His 91 scorecard, he was kind of a utility. He played a lot of places. Yeah, yeah. His 91 score, he's actually pitching, but he was an outfielder that played a little bit of everything. No kidding. But he's pitching on that card. And that's Interesting. One, that's one I want to send. Utility get, player. And get and send to him and Oral Hershiser. He was definitely, I, at that time, that was a, because 89's when they won the World Series. I think that's right. Yeah, and he had that, uh, he had that 50 something inning scoreless streak. Mickey Tettleton, Man, next this, card. That was my favorite. Is this a huge set? Because I feel like I've opened. I think it's just six, six, six or seven packs and hit nothing. Yeah, we're just not having any luck. Jeff Russell, local guy, still around Ooh. here. All right. Got the, oh, the Cal Ripken. You're getting here some. You get some names, just not getting that one. Wrong Ripken. For the set, <laughs> that's the only time you can say the wrong Ripken. Could it have been Cal that put that on his bat? I feel like he probably wouldn't have done that. I feel like he was a little too clean, like yeah, Mr. Yeah, clean. Yeah, he had a, had a reputation. To, yeah. Um, I, there was a Jeff Treadway error, and I can't remember mm. what that was. He was one of the dozen or so different error cards that were in this set. Bones, Jay Buhner. Always loved Jay Buhner when I was uh, playing ball as a kid. I actually emulated his batting stance, if you remember that really? wide open batting stance. Yeah. It worked. I got a couple of hits out of it. Raised my batting average with those two hits. Greg Maddox. Yeah, we're getting we're getting plenty of names. All right. Just not, just not the the Griffey or the. I I will dip back in if we don't. We'll be here all day. We will. We'll be here all day, folks. Ah, uh, not the biggest not the uh, biggest hit, but I'm sure. Maybe sit that one to the sweet. side. Sweet. That is your man. Yeah. George Brett, I'm really happy. Brett and Cal Ripken made an appearance. And this guy, Barry Bonds. That guy. Back when he wore a normal hat size. <laughs> we were just talking about that. How much did his hat size grow? Something crazy. Uh, it was something ridiculous. It was like astronomical, his hat size when he popped. Now, I worked uh, for a hat retailer. I mean, you pretty much forgot who that is. But I worked for a hat retailer for about 13 years of my life. From my early 20s to my 30s. Did and it I rhyme can, with bids? It did rhyme okay. with bids. But I can tell you that head sizes will increase. That's what she said. Exhibit A right here. Yeah. I have my hat that I wore in high school, my Cleveland Indians hat. I still have it. It's like a seven and an eighth or a seven and a quarter. I'm like three or four sizes bigger now. Really? 
And hat size is not always uh, does not always correlate to your girth, so it's not that. So it's not from EPS. It's, it's yeah, it's not from eating ho hos and <laughs> whatever else. All right, uh, no luck. I think you're gonna hit it. You think I'm gonna you hit got, it? You got three left. Three to go. Three to go. I'm gonna help you out, Ken. All right. I'm slower I, than this because I like hearing my own voice, <laughs> so I am talking a lot. Got a great voice. He's got the radio voice. You know, I've actually become a bigger fan of my voice. I didn't like it when I was in college at the radio station, but... <laughs> I've become I like a bigger fan of my voice. I, I like my voice now. I also noticed I sound better, like, in front of an actual mic than I do on the phone. Ah. Like when I'm recording. So this is a card that I wanted back in the day as an Indians fan. Not again, not going to send the kids to college, but a Sandy Alomar Jr. rookie. Yeah. Ooh. That Liked was me some of him back in the day because he got traded, I think, during the 89 season to the Indians. And his, uh, so Roberto's 88 and Sandy's 89. I believe, I yeah, right. yeah, I okay. think that's right. The Alomar brothers. Oh, Jose Canseco calling Tan Man. Yeah, it's sometimes I forget that, you know what, we did have insert cards in the late 80s. I'm you know, breaking in nothing, again. Nothing big. The guys, I'm but... going back for. We did have inserts in the late 80s. I thought it was all 90s is when they started, but they were not. Okay. Bob Walk from my friend uh, Bob Walk the Plank on Twitter, my buddy from my hometown. Really? Yes. Wade Boggs. All right, Ken. <laughs> this is all I have left. Oh, man. I, I feel like this is maybe an entire box. I was going to say, we seem like we're close to a box, so what do you think we're in a box? 15 packs? or 15 cards a pack what were we 36 packs a box back then yeah yep. so we're at over we're probably like three quarters of a set with collation come on we're gonna we're gonna do, do this do you think the audience would like to watch us build a set of 89 flare i am sure they would almost as much as they'd like to see us build a set of 91 flare <laughs> Jeez. No, there's. I don't know that there's okay, a set that uh exudes more opinions than 1991 flare 91 flare yeah, yeah. Is that the yellow border? That is the okay, yellow border. Okay. It's the first box I ever bought because I bought them after the season. They were on sale. I got the whole box for like 10 bucks. I was a kid. I feel good about these. All right. Feeling good. Got Will the Thrill. That, yeah, he was my second favorite player after Dale Murphy. After Dale Murphy? Yeah, Interesting. Yeah, Dale Murphy was my guy. My family was all, and my uncle, they got me into cards. They were all from Birmingham. Okay. So they were all Braves fans. Nice. So... Murphy oh. was the guy. I actually just wore my Dale Murphy player tee the other day. What? Okay, we got a Mike Schmidt, Don Mattingly combo. Be a nice combination to have when you're in. Yeah, field. draft those two. Man, I am on a dry spell. I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not even getting names. Oh, here we go, Randy Johnson. Okay. There's a, the first real hit. All right, now we got to figure out uh, which of the 42 variations it is. It is completely blacked out, right. I think. I'm sure there's somebody here that can tell us which one that is. And yeah, you can't was see it, anything. Wasn't it here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All we right. shall see. See, it's just, it's all about persevering. When you have up, oh, dude, same pack. There you go. Okay. Very nice. The two biggest rookie hits. Griffey Jr. and Randy Johnson. I feel better though, because I know sometimes sometimes you've been you've gotten skunked on some yeah. episodes. Oh, yeah, so. well, yeah, I have. I have. So yeah, I feel better about that. Yeah, I feel much better. Okay. You're you're done. All right. Okay. Well, one more. It's gotta be there's gotta be a gotta Ripken be in, in here. And then the question becomes which Ripken? There it is. Got it. All right. It and it's the original. It is the full blown blue version. Billy Ripken. Can we... Sorry, Mom. Are we going to have to put a little sticker over it on, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, all of that so that we keep well, our. Well, I feel uh, bad because I'm pretty sure that pack was meant for you and I just opened it. I wanted you to be the star here, Ken. No. I am very happy in my supporting role. So this is. Uh, Brings back memories, mm -hmm. doesn't it? That's the original. I mean, it's not a real expensive card anymore because, I mean, I think there's a lot more of those than the other variations because they did so many variations. That's true. But there you go. Is that going to It's gonna go in the collection we and did it. hold on to that? Yes, we, we did, did it, brother. It. Hey, man. We and I finally got boys. you on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah, you. we live in different. We live in the same area, but at the same time, a little ways away. Oh, so geez, glad we look, Oh, sorry. No. As so we're excited. trying to wrap this up, Bo Jackson popped up in the end of that pack. 
mean, um, speaking of legends, Bo Jackson, I mean, the stories about that man. Chris Sabo, rookie? Sabo, it just keeps on. Okay, so the last two packs I opened had everything we were looking for after 40 packs. At least we didn't hit him in the first two packs because that would have made the rest <laughs> yeah. of the show very boring. We just light the rest on fire. The rest of it, yeah. Dude, that was fun, man. Yeah. We will definitely have to do this again. Absolutely. Anytime, anytime. All right, buddy. Have a good right. one. It was great. See Thank ya. you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. Hey, guys. Thanks for checking out another episode. Make sure to subscribe to Pack Geek on YouTube. Also, check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks. Pack Geek.